I'll kick us off. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, and thanks to the MLA team for inviting me along and for the local organisers for having me out here to talk. Great to come and talk about what we're doing at Sarah's Tag. Um, we heard a little bit about some, let's call them, off-label uses of Sarah's Tag in the last presentation, and I'll touch on that a little bit more, but we're also going to hear from Craig and Sarah Cook after my talk to share a little bit with you what they've been doing with some of the earliest tags we actually put out there onto animals before we were even active in the marketplace, so that's going to be fantastic. But today I'm going to take you through where we started, what we're doing now, how we're doing it, and give you some practical examples of how various people around the world are using this technology and this information for themselves. So where we started, it was about five and a half years ago, and we were trying to work out how we were going to tackle initially just one problem. So, so often when we hear about IoT, ag tech, you know, these wearable devices for cattle, it's always about driving on farm efficiencies. And you'll hear people tout this challenge of how are we going to feed a growing global population in the face of less available arable land and freshwater resources. And we really believe this is a really honourable challenge and we want to be involved in it. But when we started looking at the environment, it was clear it was just the tip of the iceberg. And the challenges don't just stop at the farm gate. They continue right throughout the supply chain, issues around compliance, traceability, biosecurity, food safety, food origin. We've got food fraud issues in markets around the world. And ultimately culminates with the consumer, where we're trying to deliver this really complex provenance message around the, the product we're delivering to a modern consumer who's never cared more, but at the same time known less about where their food comes from. So their awareness is heightened, but they're highly confused. So we wanted to build something that would solve all three of these challenges simultaneously. And what we did was we built the world's first and only purpose-built direct-to-satellite smart ear tag for livestock. So Queensland born and bred, not been developed anywhere else in the world and developed out right out of innovation that's happened within Australia. A lot of the IP came out of the CSIRO. There was work that was done that was funded by MLA. And then we put a whole truckload of shareholder money into driving that commercialisation effort forward and coming up with this product. So what does the tag actually do? Um, that's an interesting interpretation of the slide that I developed, but we were just going to roll with it. Um, the, the tag contains a range of different technology features inside that casing. Starting probably at box number one, one of the most obvious things found within this tag is a GPS chipset. Now that's accurate down to plus or minus 2.5 metres, so it's, it's quite finite in its, in its locating of animals. Now it is nice just from a peace of mind perspective to know where our animals are, but how are people using this data? How are people generating a return on their investment in this technology. Some people are using the information to drive mustering efficiencies in very large scale operations, knowing where cattle are, being able to go directly to them and have an interaction with those animals straight away. But that's a, a single point in time location. Whereas over time, other people are developing a map of how their animals utilise a pasture. How do they move around? Where do they graze? How far do they travel away from which watering points? Then it's really up to you guys to work out why, but we can certainly help start you off down that track. We're also working on some exciting projects both here and abroad with carbon accountancy firms who are trying to work out how they use this tag data to automate the process of applying for carbon credit units. So we're really excited about that one. So often we hear about how technology is going to save us money, but to have an application where the technology could generate a brand new source of off-farm income that's something we're really excited about for the future and, and working on. Other people aren't actually working on individual animals. Instead, they're, they're working up here on their business and they're looking at building an asset register of their business, utilising Sarah's Tag data, an accurate asset register, taking that information to banks, financiers, lenders, insurers, insurance agencies. We're engaged with all these bodies, helping them understand what this data means for them and their products because it essentially de-risks the asset class that is cattle. If you can be at the bank in the office, open up a laptop and look and see exactly where someone's animals are and they're all there, they're all healthy, they're all doing their thing, it gives you a level of security around either lending or protecting those animals uh, from a financial perspective. So a real game changer in a number of industries where we may not have seen very much, a whole lot of technology innovation for a while. 
And of course, over at box number two with the GPS chipset, if we know where an animal is, we can tell whether or not it's meant to be there. So normally there's a little picture under that box of a cow heading out through a gate. Now, it could be that innocent. It could just be a case of wandering or it could be a case of stock theft. So even though it's incredibly underreported, still estimated to cost the Australian industry over $250 million a year, and I would say about 90 to 95% of the inquiry we get out of the sub-Saharan African region is about preventing stock theft and associated rural crime that occurs when people go onto properties to take animals. So really emotive topic if it's happening to you or it's happening to people you know, uh, those people are approaching the technology in, in droves. Uh, sort of the next flagship technology in the tag down the bottom at box number three is the advanced accelerometer. And this is the part of the tag that really puts the word smart in a smart tag. This is what enables it to act as a Fitbit for cows. So that's where we're constantly classifying the behavior of an animal. We know what it's doing all the time and we can analyze that data. So we understand primarily we're looking at how intensive that animal's activity is. So is it far more intensive than we expect it to be at 3 p.m. on a Monday afternoon? Is it not moving at all? That's really the things we're looking at. And we're immediately raising what we call distress alerts if that's outside of the expected range. So the tag transmits on a schedule, so it's routinely sending data because it operates via satellite and satellite data is expensive. So you get the economy by having a routine, not an always on transmission, but when the tag knows that something's wrong, it fires up and immediately sends you a packet of data. So you get real time transmission uh, when you absolutely need it. A couple of other things about the tag. We've designed this tag with traceability and provenance in mind, and we've really built it to fit in with mandatory tagging programs, not just in Australia, the NLIS program, but right around the world in about 12 to 15 other countries that run these types of programs on their livestock. So that includes things about the battery life. We had to make the tag last for 10 years. You won't find a smart ear tag out there that lasts for 10 years. We had to build a new retention system to make sure the tag couldn't be fiddled with or moved around between animals. The data is secure on that tag from when it's applied to when it comes off at processing. We did put the latest Bluetooth communication capabilities in the tag, and this is for three main reasons. One, it allows us to talk to the tag. So you can reach out and touch the tag through Bluetooth and actually change what the tag's doing so you can customise it for where you are in the supply chain. So this is really going to come into effect in the new year. In the next calendar year, we expect to launch a new package of IP with work we're doing with CSIRO based on the eGrazer technology. And this is measuring individual animal feed intake through an ear tag. So we, we benefit as a company from the 15 to 20 years of research CSIRO has been putting into this space. Kieran, what Kieran was presenting before where there was a Sarah's tag on an animal and there was a collar and they're collecting data, that's exactly the kind of work we partner with researchers all around the world as they develop new algorithms, like the suckling one they're working on. We work to translate them to the Sarah's tag platform where people can download them and push them across to their tags. And it also means, unlike with the iPhone, you don't have to be concerned if you're buying an 11 just before the 12 comes out because you can download that capability and push it across to the tag. So something we're really excited about is how future-proof the technology is. So lots and lots of data being generated, a couple of different ways you can use it. How do we get it from the tag to your eyeballs? All of that raw data that's created on the tag is actually processed right there on the tag. The tag acts as an edge computing node. It crunches the raw data and turns it into information. Shannon was talking to us about the difference between data, information, and insight. Only that highly processed and encoded information is transmitted via satellite to our very secure cloud platform where we store it, and we then make it available to the producer. But we're not pushing it out into any Ceres tag application or Ceres tag software. We didn't make one because we actually see no market failure there. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of herd management, animal management, farm management software platforms out there. We partner with them. We've got 10 online at the moment. We're working with another 50 in the background. And the idea is that we're just pushing your tag data into your platform or a platform that is capable of handling Sarah's tag data. So you have all your other data there with you. You don't want to move between multiple software programs to see each piece of data. And the exciting thing is you can then combine data sets. 
You might be combining satellite imagery and Ceres tag data, or weights and kill sheet and genetics information with Ceres tag data. And you can start to have it all in one place to make those actionable decisions. And with the producer's permission, we can use this same, it's called an API, it's just like a socket or an interface. We can use that same interface to push the data out to any third parties they want to connect. So this could be the carbon accountancy firm, could be the bank, could be the insurer, could be a vet, a consultant, a nutritionist, an agronomist, off-farm owner, off-farm manager, someone on another station, they can dial in, they can plug into that data set and look at it at the same time as you. It's not limited by the platform you're choosing to view it through. They could be on a completely different software and looking at the same tag data. So we made the data very accessible. Once we get all the raw data crunched and processed on the tag, then we get it off the tag as information. We make it very accessible, but this all starts with hardware and we had to make the hardware very accessible too. It might surprise you to know that in a, in a time when you can buy absolutely anything online, we're the only smart tag company operating in exclusively an e-commerce environment. And that's because thanks to the satellite system we have, we're the only one who can. We don't need to visit your farm, draw a map, climb up on top of the roof, right, where am I going to get power from? What's the internet connectivity like? We don't need to set up any antennas at your place, which can cost you tens of thousands of dollars to do before you even get a single tag. We simply dispatch a tag in an applicator from manufacturing to any farm in the world. As you apply the tag, the applicator turns the tag on and the data starts flowing from there. No other hardware is required. So real data visualization examples. So I tried to be even handed and I've tried to just grab a, a selection of screenshots from a few different software providers that we work with to give you some examples of how people are using this information in different ways. But I think what Craig and Sarah talk about is gonna do a far better job than, than what I'm gonna show you. And to be honest, that list I showed you earlier about the things the tag can do, when we wrote that initially within Sarah's tag, it's a lot shorter. But every time someone gets some tags and does something new and contacts us to tell us about it, it grows and grows and grows. So the, really, the exciting innovation really happens when the tags get out there on cattle. So at its most simple, this is someone using an Esri platform, which is a GIS or a mapping platform. All they've done is looked at dots on a page. They've looked at where individual animals are and lines joining those locations. So how have animals moved around a relatively small patch of land? Another group we're looking at has chosen to map the tags that they've deployed right across Australia and New Zealand because they want to zoom in and out of various properties and have an understanding of what's going on with stock on properties on a really, really large scale, more of a macro scale than what we were looking at before. This is an example of something SIBO Labs is doing where they're using multi-spectral satellite imagery. So they're looking at where is their pasture cover in green, where is it becoming overgrazed in purple, and then they're overlaying how the animals are responding to that. Where are they choosing to graze or not? And obviously this has impacts for these types of production systems on feed budgeting and how they're actually using what's available in, in those paddocks. So you can see every platform's doing something a little bit different. This is on Sapien. Um, they're actually looking at animal movements differently again. This is a sentinel monitoring approach where you only put tags on a few animals in a group. And largely that's what we see people do, only tagging 15, 10, even 5% of their animals, but they extract, I don't know, 50, 60, 70% of the value of this technology. And here we're looking at heat mapping of proportionally how are those animals using that environment. And that's representative of what all the other animals in that mob are largely doing, even though they've only tagged relatively few animals. So, and not, of course, this is within all the other things that a platform like Sapien does on the herd recording side. Geofencing. So a lot of people ask us about virtual fencing. We get a lot of inquiries, do you do virtual fencing? We do not do virtual fencing. We do not use uh, electrical shocks to move animals or stun them or anything like that. We do geofencing. So many platforms, this is Ag Live, this gives you an example. You draw, draw a polygon or you define a boundary. This is a pretty lonely cow. But if that animal approaches that boundary or crosses that boundary, you receive an alert as soon as that happens so that you can go and interact with the animal. It's not the tag interacting with the animal. And this is an example of a platform called Mapopedia. We can see one of these dots, but it's a little bit hard to pick out. I've circled it in red. This green line went just across a boundary set off an alarm and was, looks like it's been pushed back, oh, it's that 
that square there has been pushed back into that paddock or come back through the same hole that it made going out. And Mapapedia is doing a whole host of other things around that. So the functionality varies based on which software you choose, but the point is you, you have a choice in how you do that. There are some more advanced applications. We've got groups like Think Digital who are looking at virtual reality and augmented reality uh, visualizations of this data. They're looking at projecting animals either in real time or in some sort of projected map of a farm. This gives you an example of what I'm talking about. Someone's looking at the coffee table. There's a map of the farm. There's the cow in question and some data about that cow. Getting windy. And this is a, likewise, here's some data about a whole mob that they're visualising on this farm, the platform they use called Farm AR. So that may be useful for you, that may not be useful for you. These guys are just pushing the boundaries of what data visualisation looks like and might look like in the future. If you was on your glasses and coming up while you went about your daily rounds, it might be useful, it might not be, depending on what you're getting up to. Just really quickly, and, and Kieran's touched on this, Really exciting for us that normally in livestock, particularly when it comes to technology, we're getting hand-me-downs of technology from other industries, things that were developed elsewhere and we're trying to make them work in cattle. Really exciting that the Ceres Tag product, designed and developed specifically for livestock, is now being picked up by wildlife and conservancy researchers around the world who have access in terms of funding to some of the most advanced technology going. So we've had a great demand for our tags. That's where the wildlife tags are currently distributed around the world. Um, the livestock tags are in 15 countries around the world already and sold out until about January now. Uh, but I was really just proud to see that something that was developed in livestock is now being chased down by other industries and not the other way around. So we will be releasing a dedicated uh, wildlife platform next year as well for mapping all sorts of conservancy and pest species as we saw with the wild dogs that were, were collared. Um, so look, if you want to know more, you can approach me, you can visit our website. We have the ab ability for people to book appointments online and you just have a video chat with me or someone else to answer any questions and you can pretty much take it from there. If you get tags, they come out, you apply them and you move forward. Thanks guys. <laughs>